Summer Wells disappeared, but she did not vanish off the face of the earth. Someone knows what happened to the five-year-old from Beach Creek, Tennessee. Is it her parents? Mom and Dad went on Dr. Phil and let a panel of body language experts watch them answer some hard-hitting questions. Were they telling the truth? Here's the latest in the investigation. I'm Chris with True Crime Recaps, and I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you for clicking on this video. If you like what you see here, please do us the huge favor of hitting like and subscribe. It only takes about a half a second, but it means the world to us. So, let me catch you up on this case so far. June 15th, 2021 was the last day Summer was seen. Two weeks later, her mother, Candace, talked to WKRN about that day. Me and my mother and her were planting flowers. And we went in after we got done washing our hands and she got a piece of candy from grandma and she wanted to go back over and see her brothers and I said okay and I walked her all the way over to the porch and I watched her walk into the kitchen where the boys were watching TV and I told the boys I said watch summer I'll be back and within two minutes I came back and I asked the boys where their sister was and they said she went downstairs, mom, to play with her toys in the playroom. I said, okay. And I yelled downstairs for her a couple times, and I didn't get no answer, which was unusual because usually she always answers me. And so I went down there to check, and she was nowhere in sight. She was just gone. Summer was reported missing around 6.30 p.m. Now, earlier that day, Candace said she ran Summer's grandmother, Candy, to the emergency room because she was having some issues with her knee. Summer was with them, but it's not clear where her brothers were at that point. While they waited for Grandma to finish up at the hospital, they drove over to a friend's house. And by the time they returned to the hospital, the friend's 15-year-old son was with them. Now, why a teenage boy wanted to come along is also murky. From the hospital, the four of them, Summer, Candace, Grandma, and the teenager, dropped off a prescription. And while they waited for it to be filled, they decided to go swimming at a nearby lake to kill time. Now, this is where the day gets a little fuzzy. The teenager claims he had to rescue Summer in the water, but Candace says he's lying and nothing out of the ordinary happened. She says they swam, then picked up the meds, stopped at the grocery store, and dropped the boy off at his house before going home. Just hours before Summer disappeared, this photo was taken in the car on their way home. Now, to be perfectly clear, in this picture, she's asleep and not, well, you know, lifeless. But there is the question of her hair. At first, the Amber Alert featured her with chin-length blonde hair. But at some point, not long before she disappeared, her hair was chopped into a short buzz cut like her brother's. And people have wondered why her head was shaved. And to that, her father Don says... I shaved my head, and she wanted to shave her head like me and the boys did. Hmm. Okay. Today, more than five months and thousands of tips later, investigators are no closer to figuring out what happened to her after that last picture was taken. And bizarrely, this isn't the family's first missing person. Her mom's sister, Rosemarie Bly, disappeared in Wisconsin without a trace in 2009. Her case has never been solved. Now that's a strange coincidence. In Summer's case, police seem to think she might have just wandered off. The Wells family home is way out in the country without a lot of neighbors nearby. The house is surrounded by forests and hiking trails. At this point, the police are starting to wonder if maybe she just got lost. But her family insists she was kidnapped. Her father, Donald, said, We don't know if someone was waiting in the basement or if she came outside. All we know is that she went down to the basement. That's the only thing we know, to play with her toys. He was at work installing drywall on a job site that day, but he was also the one to call 911 and get the police out to the house, according to the Rogersville Review. He says it wouldn't have been hard for someone to get into the basement. According to him, his sons leave the door unlocked a lot. His theory is that someone came in through the open door, grabbed Summer, and carried her off down a steep and rugged trail leading away from the house. Now, that sounds... Perfectly plausible, except for the fact that Summer would have been screaming, right? And there was no blood evidence found in the house to suggest she was knocked out. So how could someone get her out of the house and into the woods without anyone noticing? Well, maybe they didn't get away without a sound after all. 
A neighbor and her two teenage kids say they noticed a vehicle driving up the Wells driveway on June 15th, but they were occupied with other things in the yard and they didn't really get a good look at it. Now, not long after that, they heard a vehicle door slam, but again, they didn't think anything of it. But then they heard a scream. That they didn't ignore. We heard just this kind of shrill, almost animalistic scream. It wasn't a dog. It wasn't an animal. My son and I decided to go out and look and see what we could see. We went back onto the bank, didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. And at this point, I start hearing Candace hollering for summer. And then my brain immediately went, you know, scream earlier this, uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. You heard Candace say she was across the yard at Grandma Candy's camper for only a few minutes while Summer was in the house. But the neighbors told police they heard a scream around 5 p.m., an hour and a half before Summer was reported missing. But that tip didn't get the response you might think. For some reason, the police don't think the scream they heard is connected to Summer's disappearance. Now, we don't want to second-guess the police because they have a hard job and I'm sure they're doing their best, but that just sounds crazy. Picture the scene for a minute. The Wells family and their neighbors live out in the country where it's pretty quiet, and on that day, the neighbors were outside and heard it clearly. So, if it wasn't Summer, then who was it? Of course, that question brings up another question. If the neighbors heard it, then why didn't her mother, grandma, and brothers hear it too? A search party came together fast, and the next week was spent walking the trails and knocking on doors. But at the end of it, they didn't find much to work with. The dog's tractor sent for a little while, but then it disappeared near a road. Some people refused to open up locked barns and sheds for the police to search for the little girl. Others were more helpful and described a suspicious vehicle they noticed in the area. It was a 1998 or 2000 red Toyota Tacoma pickup with a full bed ladder rack and white buckets in the truck bed. Police have been searching for it since June, but so far, despite some rumors to the contrary, they say it hasn't been identified. Both parents took polygraphs and passed, but they weren't tested right away. Don says he was too upset to take it until a couple of days passed, and Candace was also too upset to take it right away. She waited five days before sitting down for it. Six weeks later, the state took Summer's brothers out of the home, and based on local media reports, all the attention surrounding the case was endangering the kids. And as we all know by now, that basement door isn't too hard to get into. But the question on everyone's mind is, did the state remove the other kids because they think Summer's parents are involved? Well, in mid-November, Candace and Don went on Dr. Phil in their first national TV interview to answer that question and others. What they had to say was pretty interesting, but Dr. Phil's body language experts think that what they didn't say was even more telling, specifically what Candace wasn't saying. The experts, Scott Rouse and Greg Hartley, asked them if they had any reason to believe the cornbread mafia could have had something to do with Summer's disappearance. So, what is the cornbread mafia exactly? Basically, it's an organized ring of criminals in Tennessee and Georgia. Among other crimes, they control the drug trade and human trafficking in the area. And Candace's reaction to the mention of their name was pretty dramatic, to say the least. She cried uncontrollably and had to leave the set for a few minutes. When she came back, Dr. Phil asked the question we're all asking. What was that about, Candace? She was still visibly upset, but she claimed she freaked out because the name Cornbread Mafia sounded horrible. But she denied knowing anything about the group or anyone in it. Let's just say Candace is not a great liar. The experts said she looked like she was hiding something when it came to Summer and that Southern Mafia. Now, they're not implying that she or Don physically did anything to Summer themselves, but that she, not Don necessarily, but Candace, knew something she wasn't saying. Don and Candace are no strangers to crime and punishment. In the past, Don served time for multiple felonies, including drugs and burglaries in Arkansas, Utah, and Texas. His most recent domestic abuse charge came in 2020 when Candace filed a temporary restraining order saying, He drinks and throws things. I am afraid of being hurt. He is abusive physically and mentally toward me. I am afraid for my children and myself. My mother fears he is going to hurt her because she is staying in her camper on the property. But she dropped it a week later. 
Candace has a record in Wisconsin with the most recent charge in 2003 for domestic abuse. And Don's oldest son from a previous relationship is a registered sex offender in Utah. But his father says he wasn't in Tennessee when his half-sister disappeared. And that's where the case is today. If you have any information to share, please contact the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at the number in the pinned comment below. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, please take a minute to give this a like and hit subscribe and the bell so you never miss a recap. Amy and I are here with new cold cases, solved mysteries, and developing stories every week. And you never know what you're going to hear. So, you don't want to miss a recap. Until next time, take care.